Stand by. <laughs> it's like a Renault 4. So, Mark and I are here from Ridercam TV. Welcome to another video. And today, we're going out on the BMW S1000R. Ah, ah. <laughs> right, thousand R. Let's go and see what this thousand R is all about. Well, first impressions. It's a sports bike, right? It's not as cramped as the S one thousand double R. But I guess this is the naked version. Either that or my hips have got used to riding different bikes of different heights. I don't feel too cramped. Although it's taken a lot of my brain power to actually work out where the pedals are. Because they're kind of hidden away. But it's got some poke. Now this bike I think is about 205 kilos. It's got 165 brake horsepower and about 114 newton meters of torque. And it's not very heavy at all. So it feels like a pocket rocket. And now that I've got used to the fact that the brake pedal is really quite hidden away and you've got to fish around for it with your feet, but I guess that's just because I'm getting used to it. All of the buttons are BMW-esque, exactly the same as the rest of the range. You've got your cruise control, you've got your adaptive suspension settings, you've got your trip, your info, your indicators, obviously the horns and all that sort of stuff. So that's much of a muchness as to what's different on this bike. I am sat forward, so I do feel that I'm further forward than normally on most of the bikes that I'm riding. But it's not an abnormally comfortable uncomfortable place to be to be fair there is as you would imagine on a naked bike absolutely no wind protection whatsoever but that's just one of those things when you're riding one of these bikes I like the fact that it's really thin it feels like a sports bike and it is a sports bike isn't it I mean let's be honest it is a sports bike just for the road the seat is really hard not a problem but it's quite got quite a hard seat and there's a little bit of my weight going on to the handlebars but nothing out of the ordinary certainly nothing that i would be particularly that worried about now has it got yeah it's got a quick shifter on this one as well so up and down the box as buttery smooth as any of the other bmw range cruise control really smooth but I guess this sort of bike, you know, us pottering around 30 miles an hour, it's not the sort of bike that you're going to be happy doing that all the time. You want to go off and see what it does and move the bike about, you know, get some speed into it. But I don't, it's quite strange. The RR, I felt so cramped, it was unreal. But this bike, I don't feel cramped at all. It's taking some time to get used to where the pedals are in terms of the brake and the gear and that sort of stuff but that's just getting used to different bikes I'm really liking the styling of this bike but hasn't got a huge tank so you're probably only going to get about 100 120 miles if you're lucky out of this tank especially because it's one of those bikes that you just really want to ride and you really want to crank it up and it does something to it's, it's another one of those bikes that when you're riding, ordinarily you're riding one of these bikes and it's one of those things that happens to your brain. You know, I'm a quite conservative rider, I guess. You know, I try and be sensible. I like to have a bit of fun as well. But I like to stay in the realms of the speed limit. And you know, for the second that I've been on this bike, it's just telling me to just push me, push me, push me, Toby. Go faster, go faster. It's got that... It's that endorphin feeling of 
knowing that you're alive and part of a bike. Now I get, I get that from my bike, I get that from the rides that I've been on and the rides that I do on my bike. But this is very much a, as soon as you get on it, the bike is just wanting to go. And 165 brake horsepower, I mean, that is just insane. On a 200 kilo bike, that is ex in an insane ratio. It's got a nice little burble, this bike. That burbling engine, you know you've got some power under the hood here. Now, there, there will be a lot of people probably scream at me saying, well, this isn't a much of a touring bike. I think it's probably one of those bikes that you can do anything on but you've got to want to do everything on one of these bikes. You know, it's very easy to say, this is a bike you should have for touring. This is a bike you should have to ride around the, the town. This is a bike you should have for Sunday rides and that sort of stuff and going out with your mates. But you know, we haven't all got deep pockets like that. Mine certainly aren't very deep at all. Just having one motorbike puts enough, it takes a dent out of the money that goes into those pockets. And you kind of need a versatile bike. And biking is one of those things that you can have a motorbike that does everything the way that you want to do it. And it doesn't matter what other people think about whether they think that bike is suitable for you, whether they think that what you're going to be doing on that bike is right for you. It's all about you as the rider. The fact that all of the switch gear is exactly the same on this BMW as any other BMW, it works in exactly the same way. But you know, I don't feel as though I'm so low on this one. But you know, this is just fun. A BMW fun factory, I think this, is, this should be called. Now riding this over the Pico Mountains or Picos Mountains would be insane fun. Especially, and if any of you guys know it, there's a, a lovely place in Spain just after the Picos, heading down into Spain called Riano. And those roads are some of the best roads that I've ridden. And some people will say, well, they're just big sweeping bends, but I, that's one of my favorite, favorite roads that I've ridden in Europe. Because I really like the open sweeping bends that enable you to do 90K, 100K, 120, 130, whatever you want to do with relative ease. And I just get the feeling that this bike would just plough it through there. Ah, oh, you know, it's just insanely great. Very nice. I like the fact that the tank sticks up. It's quite a big tank and you kind of sit into it. So I can literally hold on to the seat with hold on to the tank with my knees just to get a bit more stability when I'm going around the corners. And it, you know, I've not been one for chucking my arms and my legs out, but this really makes me want to put my leg out and see how far down I can get on a corner. It really does. So let's have a bit of a talk and look around the bike. So on this dashboard, it's the white dials, and I'm not sure whether I like white dials. I don't. <laughs> Do you not? No, I got rid of the car because it had white dials. I'm not sure that I like the white dials, but it goes with the keeping of the bike. You know, it's a sports bike and that's what people like. It's got all the information readily available to you, your average miles, what gear you're in, what speed, your fuel, your temperature, what mode you're in, all that sort of stuff. Happy mode or sad mode? Happy mode. Okay. It's always happy on this bike. And you've got your, your other indicators there. It's a standard setup there and I guess that in 2018, 2019, they might well change these the same as they're changing around the whole of the range because it's kind of a little bit dated now, but the bike, as I sit on it, because Mark's going to do some wizardry with his camera, as I sit on it, my legs aren't up as high as they were on the RR. So, so not only are my legs not as high up, I don't get that problem with my hip feeling like it's going to pop out <laughs> but the handlebars they, they must be slightly different because i'm not over so far there is a bit of weight on my wrists but not as much as i thought there would be on this bike and certainly when i rode away looking on this side the brake pedal is really quite small 
So when I first got on the bike, I was doing that, trying to find it, but it's really quite close to the bike. So you've got to really fish around, but I guess, like I said, when I was riding, that's one of those things that you get used to, and it's a bike that I've not ridden before. So it's really quite small. Pegs are really nice, they're really good. But when you stop... There's always a but. Yeah, when you stop, over on this side, it's like with many of the BMW bikes that we've ridden, or many of some of the, some of the bikes we've ridden, it's like a little twig. And it almost feels like the bike is going over way too far. So without, the se without a centre stand, I'm wondering how easy it would be just to pick your spot to park at any time. So this bike has got massive Bridgestone tyres, which is really good. Bridgestones are, are, are one, of the, one of the good tyres for sports bikes. It's got a chain, as you would imagine. Now, Mark and I aren't great fans of chains just purely because of the adjustment but on a bike like this you kind of need a chain and see how big it is i mean that is a massive massive chain isn't it can i just try something quite flimsy that looks really really quite tacky. flimsy yeah that's flimsy plastic and again all of this space here but i guess it's a sports bike you know this isn't a bike that somebody's going to use to go off-roading like we would on our adventures. This is a bike that people are going to use for um, all sorts, but they're going to keep it nice and clean, aren't they? And again, you've got all the wizardry and stuff in here, again with a red spring there, which matches the bodywork. But I do like the styling of it. The styling's really great. I like the fact that it's got these pointy bits on there. <laughs> <laughs> I do like pointy bits. Yeah, we like pointy bits. We like pointy bits. It's like one of Madonna's bras. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the front, coming round to the front, we have got old style bulbs in there, which is quite, quite strange in 2017. Old style bulbs. Most of the range of BMWs have got LED lights front and back. It's got LED indicators, so why not have LED headlights on there as well? I'm not sure how easy they would be to change, but while we're at the front, look at that massive radiator, and you've got two of them there. So again, no protection, but you know you can pick up some horrible stuff on the roads that could bang into there. So I'm not sure whether I would put something there to protect them or not. But mud guard doesn't come down very far, does it? Not very That's far. That's going to get all. bashed by everything. It will do, won't it? But we're—I guess we're coming. We're talking about this bike from a let's go touring around the world, ride on different roads kind of perspective. And it's quite, kind of quite difficult reviewing a different bike and putting yourself in somebody, different, somebody else's shoes because I ride an adventure bike all year round, every weather. And yet this isn't an adventure bike. Every weather or all weathers? All weather, <laughs> in every weather. <laughs> Just picking holes. But it's not an adventure bike, it's a sports bike. It's a versatile bike, you can do anything. I've seen people strap amazing amounts of stuff on bikes like this to do tours. It's a great bike, and I tell you what, it goes like beep, <laughs> it goes so well. But there's nowhere, there's nowhere to strap anything. No, you can't get a strap on for this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it has, got, it has got a little pouch in it. A little pouch, everyone little needs pouch. a pouch. <clears throat> Oh, look at that. Oh, a little glove box. Oh, you can put loads in there, yeah, can't you? Get you? Load, you can put you your get, pen in there. Well, you've got like a... a Tic Tacs. Yeah, a little opening for a couple of gummy bears, keep you going. A bit of Kendall mint cake in there for those times when you're caught short. And you have got a BMW toolkit. You need a BMW toolkit. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome bike. I wonder how big the tank is. Tank's probably about it's 16 litres. It's about that big. Yeah, all right. I didn't realise you were really a scientist. Good. Tell you what is really good about having a tank this size on one of these bikes. I don't think the range is going to be up too much. But when I was riding it, I can understand why they put these tanks on there because I was able to really grip it with my knees. So going around and it really, this bike, it just tells my brain that I want to get my knee down. It makes me want to put my knee out and see how far away I am and pretend that I'm actually touching the ground even though I'm probably like that far away <laughs> <laughs> but there's you know there's not much in the way of refinements like we're used to on our adventure bikes or 
on that bagger, there isn't. The refinement is in the engine and the way that the engine works. The power, to, power delivery is absolutely insane. If you want a bike that's got an insane power delivery that's much like the, the enjoyment you'd have on an RR but without leaning over too far, this is the bike for you. Do you know, it's a bit sad that they've put crappy little bits of plastic on there. You know, they sort of, they try to do carbon fibre lookalikes on the on the side panels and you know this looks all looks very nice and then they put a garbage piece of plastic as a hugger and know, a chain guard. Do you know Mark? Fashion isn't about the usability, fashion is about what you look like. So that's our really quick review of the BMW S1000R. Really, really great bike. Versatile, fast, power delivery is insane. Brilliant bike, it gets our thumbs up even though I'm not a sports bike rider. But if you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, put some comments down below. The subscription button will be somewhere flashing up right about now. And we'll see you in the next video.